Welcome back to my channel guys. This is your boy Ali. Hope everybody's doing wonderful. Thank you so much for subscribing for the people that are brand new. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and today I'm going to be talking about the firewall options on the BGW320 admin panel. Now if you want to advance your firewall skills you may want to stay on this channel and this is for the residential gateway not enterprise level i'm not going to be talking about that so if you like to know about the firewall options definitely stay tuned i'll go a little deeper before we waste any time let's dig right into it just like before, I made a video about how to troubleshoot using the admin panel for the BGW320. Today, as I was saying earlier, that I'm gonna be talking about the firewall section of the BGW320 admin panel. Now, just like every time, I'm gonna go um, from the beginning so you guys know how to reach your um, ISP router. Now, your ISP router is, uh, is your AT&T BGW320 device, which is uh, pretty much somewhere in the house that there's a fiber terminating to and providing you with that one gig fiber connection. So here we go. So you're gonna go to your default IP address, which is your default gateway IP, 192.168.1.254. And then of course you're gonna get to this as well. Now we're just gonna jump straight into the firewall section because we did the diagnostics in the previous video. Check out the video, the link on top right, so status, so this is a firewall status, packet filtering, IP pass through, NAT default, firewall. Now this is the status for all these different tabs that you're seeing on top over here. Um, so some are on, some are off, and I'll go through each, each one of them. So the first section is gonna be packet filtering. Um, okay. Okay, so before you could get into the uh, packet filtering or the firewall section, there is a security code that you have to put. Uh, it's called the device access code. You need to put that code in so you could access these settings. It's a security feature and you can find that device access code on the back of your router. Okay, so this is the packet filtering section. As you could tell, you could disable all the packets and it's just one click. But a lot of people um, you know, do like to packet uh, very few people actually like to do packet filtering because uh, uh, you know it's a uh, it's a very useful feature. Not all the gateways or the routers um, you know uh, did provide that feature, but as we're getting closer to the Wi-Fi six, we uh, you are able to uh, get this type of feature, and it's uh, very useful for people who want to. Uh, you know, do some prioritization or pa uh, packet inspections or anything like that. Uh, so in this case, uh, a quick one before you get confused looking at all this. Um, so what you want to do is if you do want to inspect your packets coming into your network, which is your home network, uh, what you want to do is there's a few ways you could detect the packet and drop it. You could detect it by, you know, the interface, uh, you could de detect it by the IP address, you could detect it by the protocol, or you could detect it by the port number. Now in this case, let's, uh, for example, create an ad match. Now, this is, let's say an IP address is coming into my network and I wanna be able to do, match the entry or detect it or, or be able to flag it or filter it, so on and so forth. So what you wanna do is you wanna put the IP address of the device that you don't want coming into the network to be blocked at the firewall level before it even enters the network. So you will put that IP address here. In this case, let's say we put one dot, this is just an example. Uh, so let's say if you put this IP address and anything that has this IP address assigned to it, um, most likely a public IP or whatever the IP is, is gonna get detected at the firewall level and uh, you have to enable the rule and then it, it will get dropped. It will get matched and as soon as the router matches it and it's gonna just simply get discarded. So that means you're not gonna get any traffic from this IP address within your network. Now you could do the same thing from the port. You could pretty much block ports, you could do, uh, hey, let's just say 
port 500 to 720. You want to block all the ports for inbound um, and may pretty much enable the rule to detect these ports coming in and block them. You could do that as well. Uh, source MAC address is very specific. So in this case, like for example, you know the end device's MAC address um, and you want to be able to block it the same thing. Uh, you could pretty much do that as well. So pretty much the same thing here. Um, now these are just some templates that they have provided. So what you could do is pretty much uh, enable these if you want to. So, and you have to check over here. Uh, so once you do enable, uh, it'll start filtering packets based on whatever field that is provided over here. Before I confuse you further, let's uh, move on to NAT gaming. So NAT gaming is something, uh, you know, back in the days you had to create a full DMZ and it was a manual process. Now you could simply pretty much select whatever prioritization you need to whatever device in your house. For example, if it's a PS4, if it's a gaming application or whatever, you could pretty much select it here and, uh, you know, get the service details of that device and uh, pretty much um, you know, allow it to, uh, whatever, um, you know, device that you, you need. So like, for example, let's add a device. So once you select whichever gaming application by whatever device, um, and then you just add it, it gets added to the hosted applications. So pretty much now your, uh, natting is going to be port forwarding to this port address right there 122 12222 so that's that and then you could also remove it as well um, and then if you want to do custom now you got the service name which could be whatever if you're using a cloud service for gaming you could put that uh, fqdn over here and the port ranges that you could access that game on and then uh, the horse host port right so host port you could leave it blank if you don't know it but pretty much you could add uh, you know in this case you want to leave both TCP and UDP because a lot of times packets are coming in on UDP not necessarily they always work on your TCP so um, so that's for your now public subnet host uh, is something that I don't try to mess with because once you enable this pretty much you're exposing your um, your internal network to the public subnet. Uh, pretty much it's uh, it's allowing, it's uh, sending traffic to your internal IPs from a public IP address. So it's not protected anymore. So you don't wanna enable that unless you have a specified reason to why you wanna do that. IP pass through, I think I went through this over uh, my other videos. So if you wanna set up your own internal network, what you wanna do is enable pass through and allow that either the MAC address to your internal router and let the traffic pass through to that. Uh, and uh, this way you, uh, you are only using uh, the AT&T router as a modem pass through pretty much. And of course, uh, you know, you wanna leave the pass through mode to either dynamic or fixed. Um, now, if you're IPs are getting allocated by a DHCP server. Um, it could be done in two ways. Um, so in normally it's a dynamic approach, but uh, in this case, I think, uh, you know, if it's not being dynamically hosted, um, hosting the IP addresses, then you want to leave it as fixed. All right, go, going to the firewall advanced section. So over here, you got the echo request being denied. Uh, in this case, uh, if you have drop incoming ICMP echo request to LAN, if you have it to off, it's going to keep sending it. Um, but, you know, if by default, if you don't have this feature running, then, you know, this, this setting does not matter. Now, in my case, I have these two turned on because I do have a uh, request to devices on LAN addresses and WAN addresses. So I have turned this on. So what that will do is drop the IC ICMP request coming into those uh, WAN uh, gateway or WAN, uh, LAN devices. LAN devices are all your, pretty much your uh, end devices within the house. Uh, your WAN device would be your router. 
Um, now, another thing I do have, there's a lot of SIP traffic as well. So SIP header, headers coming in uh, with echo uh, requests, uh, I also have uh, that to be disabled as well. Um, so, um, but that's uh, pretty uh, generic here. Uh, nothing, uh, you know, to, not a lot of people have to really touch this because by default, they'll have some settings on already for you guys. Last but not least, uh, security option, parental control status is disabled. Uh, I've, uh, I think it's a paid feature by um, BGW320. I'm not, don't quote me on that, but uh, that's something disabled by default. But if you guys want, I think you could access the app and enable it um, through there. But yeah, that's it, guys. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to drop in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. Um, and then next, I'm going to be making a video about um, possibly voice if there's not much. I don't think there's much in it. So, but yeah, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in till next time. See you guys later.